everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to another live stream. I'm so excited you guys are here. Um, I always love getting to do these once a month watercolors. They're a little bit special for me um, because I'm mainly an acrylic painter, but I do enjoy watercolors as well. So I'm just here to share my knowledge and what I've learned over the last couple years um, and just have fun. Um, these are especially for if you've kind of just begun the watercolor journey. So I already see there's some in here who have never done watercolor before. So that's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, just I think my main... Um, advice would be just don't be afraid to do it again so um, I'm gonna teach you this don't be afraid to go back and just do it again and again um, because the more practice you get the easier it becomes and like I I just know that the one that I paint today is gonna look completely different than the one I painted like a month and a half ago um, and that's mainly just because you ch every time you paint something you choose a different path of what colors to use and where to put those colors um, and so even doing the same painting over and over again you'll still learn like oh I did this last time and I didn't like how it turned out so now I'm going to change something a little bit or um, change how you do something and uh, it will have a completely different outcome so um, one of the things I love about watercolor is that it's like I don't know I feel like the materials are a lot cheaper I mean I guess it depends on what you use um, but I think with acrylics you can just like squeeze out like gobs of paint and then feel like you wasted a lot of materials whereas watercolor it's all contained and um, even when I do a painting all of I usually I usually will clean them out for my classes but normally throughout the month when I'm doing watercolor I'll just leave that color in it because when you add water back to your palette it reactivates it and you don't like waste color <laughs> it's the best thing ever um, but for the purpose of class I clean it out so that I'm starting fresh um, but yeah I just feel like it's really easy and even the material if you're you know if you've never done watercolor before um, yes it does help to have watercolor paper but you don't have to start off with watercolor paper like this is a mul this is a mixed media book that I use for watercolor I use for drawing I use for acrylic um, it's really really handy for when I need to use examples um, for my classes like I'll, I'll show you next month's class um, but it's just really easy if I need to like to practice something or even to paint right um, yes it's not watercolor paper it doesn't react the same but it's really nice for practice um, so all of the tools and things that I use specifically are in the description um, as well as they're linked on my Amazon shop so if you're interested in anything that I use specifically um, whether it's for practice or for actually just like painting little uh, little illustrations um, that's all linked below with the exception of um, I get everything off of Amazon with the exception of my watercolor kit this is from uh, Culture Hustle which is Stuart Semple it, they he also does um, the black is black and the pink is pink I think is what it started with the whitest white like all those things if you've ever heard of that or Stuart Semple um, this specific watercolor kit is from him but I also have another one that I have um, that I got off of Amazon which works pretty good too 
Um, now, granted, I, I, I like to say I'm a beginner teacher because um, I've only been doing watercolor for probably three or four years, but that's three or four years of experience that maybe somebody else doesn't have, and I am just here to share that in information and knowledge, um, and we're just going to have fun painting. Um, so if you're new to the channel, make sure you just subscribe. I do watercolor classes once a month, at least I try to, at least once a month. Um, and the rest of mine are acrylic. So if you haven't subscribed, uh, make sure to do that. Um, I'm trying to get 10,000 by the end of the year, but we'll see how that works. Um, let's go ahead and dive into all of our supplies. If you have a question, um, please let me know in the comment section. And if I don't catch it right away, just at my name and it'll pop up. For my watercolor classes, I have to change my setup. So my computer is actually off to the side. Um, so I'm not like directly looking at it. So I. I don't always notice comments or questions right when they do it unless they have, um, unless you do like at me, unless you tag me, because then it will pop up yellow and it's like really obvious to me. Um, so yeah, make sure that you ask questions if you have them, um, or if you want me to go over something again, feel free. This is a beginner class. You might have questions and most likely somebody else might have the same question too. Um, so feel free to, feel free to ask it. Okay, so this is what we're painting. Um, if you are like me and sometimes you want to just focus on painting, you don't want to focus on the drawing part or proportions or anything like that, I do have a traceable available, which I do use. Um, I did use on this page. So if you would like that traceable, feel free to go on my um, on my Patreon. It's five dollars for the whole month. Um, this is the last one of the. Um, of the month, but you'll get access to literally every traceable that I've ever done for my entire channel. Um, so if there's other classes that you want to go um, grab, if you only want to stay for like the last couple days, um, then you can grab this one, you can grab the other watercolor ones, um, but it is a way to support me and that's really helpful to keep all these um, classes free, um, as well as help upgrade equipment and things like that. Um, so. Yeah, if you would like that, um, that is available in my Patreon at the lowest tier level, okay? Um, for my paints, again, this is a uh, culture hustle, but you can use whatever watercolors you prefer. I have a paper towel, I have two things of water. For watercolor, it is super important that you have two, uh, this is four, two <laughs> um, things of water because you it's really important that you have a clean water to grab from when you're either mixing colors or going in to do a wash of of any sort um, so make sure that you have two so you have like a dirty water and then a clean water um, especially if you're going into those lighter colors you're going to want that clean water or if you're or if you're putting water on your page you don't want to be putting already tainted dirty water on your page okay so make sure you have two, at least two waters um, some people like to have three I at least have two um, and then this is a mixed media booklet it's a uh, eight and a half by five and a half uh, booklet which um, is perfect for card making so I've done this in previous classes for my uh, for my Christmas classes, we'll paint two, actually I think I might have them in here because this is my watercolor booklet. Uh, yeah, so these are my, um, these are watercolor uh, Christmas stuff. Um, so they are literally perfect for gluing on to like your four and a quarter or four and a half by five and a quarter, something like that. What is that? Whatever, whatever the dimensions are for like a, like a, regular card um, they're perfect for that um, yeah five and a half by four and a quarter yep um, so they're literally the perfect size for that so if you want to get this for that then it works great <laughs> um, but yeah so uh, this works great um, it's not watercolor paper it's not acrylic paper but it works for both um, so it's very versatile and it comes in a three pack. So I have like one for classes, one for watercolor, and then, or one, one to doodle on, one for watercolor, one for acrylic. Um, and it's, it's really great. Um, and then for brushes, I just have, I have like a kit. Um, again, this is also linked. I just have a kit of a bunch of round brushes. You don't really need anything else. Um, as long as your brush um, is only used for watercolor. I highly recommend you get a separate 
brush kit specifically for watercolor um, because watercolors just work differently than acrylic. Um, and sometimes I don't always like clean these too well. And if you'll notice that my, my acrylic stuff can get really, um, I don't know, textured <laughs> in terms of um, the wear and tear on it because with watercolors, it's all very um, gentle in my opinion. And with acrylic, you're like dabbing and you're giving texture and sometimes you're going against the, against the bristles and things like that. Um, so with my acrylic stuff, I have to change that out more often because um, depending on the brush, it, they can get wear, wore down a little bit more. Um, but with these, these stay really, really nice. Um, and so I got these specifically for watercolor. Um, and yeah, these I got from Amazon. Uh, there's a bunch of different sizes. I probably use three sizes mostly. These are probably the three that I use most. Um, and then occasionally I'll use my like tiny one for details, which where did it go? I still have some that haven't even like, I haven't even taken the little plastic thing off because I just don't, I don't use it. This is the other one that I use. Sometimes I use this one for, um, for just tiny details. There we go. See? Um, okay. So that is pretty much all of the supplies. Those are all the supplies. Uh, does anyone have any questions uh, at this moment? I am going to go over things that I did other classes that are going on right now. Um, so if you do not have a traceable, um, go ahead and draw on. Essentially, if you don't have a traceable, think about it in a term of like a really fat, two balled snowman okay you have two main balls and that's going to be your main um your main shape and then you just have the ears coming out two eyes nose mouth um it's pretty it's pretty simple um and even the one that i did looks a little bit different than you know the one that i did before and because they're all they're all gonna be different um the main thing that i would make sure of is that your lines that you do end up being very very light especially where the light colored fur is going to go you're gonna want that to be very light and only dark enough so that you can see where everything is going the, the things around uh, the lines around the eyes those can be a little bit darker because they're gonna be covered with um, black or darker colors um, but yeah that's that. Uh, while you guys prep that, um, just in case anybody needs to catch up, I don't know um, where you're at with your traceable or drawing it on. Um, while you're doing that, let me go over um, some classes coming up um, and things that we're working on on Patreon. Um, this is what we did last uh, week we did these are all these are all going to be acrylic except for the class that I'm going to show next month um, So this is acrylic. Uh, we did this kind of Bob Ross-esque style of a um, seascape um, Pastel seascape and we added some palm fronds um, And some clouds and things like that. So that was a lot of fun So if you are into acrylic, uh, make sure to go and check that one out. That one is a free uh, class on my YouTube. So all you have to do is go on my YouTube. It'll be the last live class that I did, um, uh, minus this one. Um, and then I have lots of other seascapes if you're into that. Over on Patreon this month, I do a class every month for my patrons who support me. Um, just as a thank you, um, this is in the $10 tier. So in the $10 tier, not only do you get the traceables, but you also get um, a free class every month. Um, that's exclusive to just those who support me. So it's not available anywhere else but Patreon. Um, so this is what we did to this month. We did a very, very pretty um, cherry blossom bouquet. It came out really lovely. Um, it's very chic in my opinion, um, but it's very pretty. So if you're into that sort of thing. And then as of yesterday, we painted more of our turtle. If you're following along on Facebook, which um, can I just say, if you are not following me on Facebook, please go over there and follow me because that's where I post probably 90, 95% of all of my content is over on Facebook. Um, I post, yeah, let me post uh, my Facebook page. Um, my name everywhere is pretty much Samantha Anderson Artist. So Patreon, YouTube, Facebook, um, anywhere 
uh, like my website, Samantha Anderson Artist. So if you do Facebook slash Samantha Anderson Artist, most likely it'll be it'll be mine um, because that's just I've patented all the <laughs> all the things of Samantha Anderson Artist, um, including Instagram and things like that. Um, so please go follow me over on the Facebook. I show uh, my work in progresses every Wednesday. So this morning I posted a picture of this one. Let me get closer of the detail. We finished. Um, we finished this whole like area with a couple fish, a couple fish in there, and it's just it's coming together really, really lovely. Um, the next two classes, well, the next class is going to be um, not next week, but the week after, um, and we're finishing out the coral, and then the two classes after that, we're going to be finishing um, the turtle, which I'm really excited for. Um, it's like hurry up and wait almost, so I'm like trying to hurry up. Um, and I'm just excited. So, um, yeah, that is kind of what's going on in my Patreon and what we did last week. Next month, if you are only here for the watercolor, that's totally fine. I have lots of watercolor. I, I wouldn't say lots. I have like four or five classes now, maybe a little bit more. Um, but next month we are doing kind of a really simple, easy, boho, abstract kind of wall art. And this is what we're painting. Now these are just kind of really small versions of what you could paint um and they're kind of thumbnail size so they're not super detailed in like the um the kind of leafy areas i'm excited to paint it on a bigger scale so i can actually be a little bit more precise on it um but that's what we're painting uh next month so if you want to learn how to do that it's a really easy process but i know for me sometimes even if it's an easy process um, I won't really know it's an easy process unless I see somebody doing it. Um, so if you're like me and you like seeing the process while doing it, um, I got you covered. That will be next month, okay? Um, so hopefully everybody is ready with their sketch. Um, I'm sorry for all the shadows. I can't figure out lighting with watercolor. It's just like everywhere. Um, <laughs> I'm still working on it. Um, but hopefully you guys can see everything. Um, fine so let's go ahead and start our watercolor class so the first thing um, that we are going to be doing is getting together all of our colors okay so go ahead and grab your grab your paint brushes um, grab your water make sure you got everything out um, and let's get started okay I'm gonna start um, just with like a medium-sized color um, or brush and this is simply so that I can get together all the colors that I want to use. Now, when you're first beginning, it's really easy to just grab a color and go straight to the canvas or the paper or whatever you're painting on. But I urge you to take a moment and mix your colors so that you have a color palette to grab from. Um, again, it's really easy to just try to you know get color on there, but you, what you'll find is that you'll end up putting it on there and then wishing you had a different color. Um, to grab from and then you know you haven't wetted that yet and you're just not kind of you're not ready for it so I'm gonna grab this I'm gonna grab some water and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make um, some just some different browns and like yellow browns and red browns um, in all of these little um, sections okay um, so I'm gonna grab my main color it's kind of be gonna be like this darker brown so I almost have like a burnt sienna with a, a raw umber almost and they don't need to be too saturated because I'd much rather add on layers than put on too much at one time uh, when I was painting this you can kind of see the layers of it there's a lot of layers in it um, I think the bottom probably has the least amount of layers um, but we, whenever I do something like this, as like detailed as this, um, I try to really layer. And if you're in acrylic painting, you'll know what that means. You know, it's, you have the undercoat and then you have layers and then you have low lights and then you have highlights and then you have all the details. Um, it's, it's the same thing. Um, one thing that I will say that is very different, um, from acrylic is that you have to think about the highlights before you start so for instance the whites 
the light areas of this painting are the white paper. So you have to think about that before you go on because usually with acrylics it's kind of backwards. You put the highlights on like at the end, you know, you put those white sparkles or anything that's shiny or anything like that, it's the last thing that goes on. So you don't have to think about that for like the whole painting until the last like 10 minutes of the painting, right? Well here it has to be your your fourth forethought of your painting. It has to be the first thing you think about um, because if you cover up the white then you're gonna lose the white, right? Um, okay, so I have like a like a darker brown. Sorry, I wish that I could zoom in to this area. I can't really, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can zoom in. Maybe I can, let's see, <laughs> palette. Let me see if I can zoom in on my palette so that I can, there we go, maybe too much, one, okay, now I'm just gonna move it up, all right, maybe that's better, okay, yeah, I think it's better, um, all right, um, so I have like a brown yellow, I have a yellow, wait, a brown, a brown brown, a yellow brown, I'm gonna do a reddish brown so I'm gonna grab my kind of burnt sienna color um, so the colors all here would not be helpful um, because they're like diamond blue or like <laughs> like sunflower yellow or something like that they just they don't have actual colors like burnt sienna and like the colors that we all know <laughs> so it wouldn't be helpful for me to tell you exactly what colors um, this is on the palette so I apologize if I'm using like general colors that you might know versus the actual color that it is because that wouldn't be helpful um, so we have this color um, we have a reddish brown I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown to this red one um, yeah I think that's I think it's red enough and then I'm gonna do a, a darker brown, but it's got a little bit more of a black in it. So it's a little bit more grayed out. It's not so rich. But I don't want it to be that dark, so I'm, I might add some white to it. kind of softens the color just a little bit. Okay. I think those are the colors that I want. All right. So these, these are the colors that I have. So from here on out, I'm going to call this my yellow, my brown, my red, and my dark brown. I like how my, my dark grayish brown. Okay. And then we'll kind of, we'll make a little bit of a pink right over here. Um, so I'm going to take some pink right here and I'm going to add just a touch of brown to it. That was not a touch, that was a lot more than a touch. <laughs> do as I say not as I do <laughs> and then I'm also going to add some white to it just to whiten it up make it softer all right so I have a light pink just so I can add um, that a little bit later 
All right, now that we have our color palette, it's gonna be a lot easier to add these certain things. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna start adding um, our darks and our colors in very light, um, very light amounts. So whenever I'm grabbing, I'm not trying to grab all of the color. I'm just trying to grab a little bit of color. Um, and what's nice about watercolors is it does dry fairly fast. Um, so you can just keep adding color. So I'm going to just put some water in the face area and I'm going to grab some dark color and let that kind of just bleed over. Trying to keep in mind of like where the dark ends up being. And whenever you come down with this color, try to add it in little like, um, I don't know, little uh, like brush strokes so that it kind of adds like little furry textures. You can add um, some darker areas at the tops of the ear. And that will kind of blend in a little bit. You can blend it in yourself. And then you can get your brush wet again and just kind of pull down that color. I'm just going to add this dark color to the bottom and then you can get your brush wet and then just blend it out a little bit. If you ever get too much on your, like you have too much color here or whatever, grab your brush, clean it off, and then clean it off in your clean water. Go back over this area and take off some of that color, like lift the color off of it. I'm going to go in um, around the eye while this is still a little bit wet. Give him a little character. Now if you have a hamster that you are painting, feel free to put in your own markings of your hamster. I'm just going to grab some more dark. I'm going to add a little bit more black to one of the sides of my dark brown just so I can get a little bit of variance in, um, in my colors. And I'm often rinsing out my brush and then coming in with a damp clean brush to blend the certain areas. So 
So here I go again, I just rinsed it off. I'm going to blend the top part of that arm. And I'm gonna go into my yellow and pull that up into the cheek area. And what I'm gonna do in the face is I'm gonna grab some clean water, I'm going to put it all over his face with the exception of his mouth and grab my pink and I'm just going to put it in the middle here wipe off my brush and just kind of blend it blend out the outside edges of it And that gives him a really cute little blushed face. Oh, so cute. You can give a little bit of color on his nose. And if I'm going too fast, just know that I'm being very loose. I'm not trying to like be perfect in my um, my placement or um, my application. I'm being very loose because that's kind of like my style is kind of that looseness. Alright, so I'm just going to add a little bit of furry texture around the outside. I'm going to go in with some, maybe some other colors. Again, being very loose with my, my um, placement. I'm gonna put some color over here on the right side. And then I'm going to rinse off my brush, blend it in. If there's too much color, you can come back and kind of take, take some of that off. Don't forget to give a little bit of shadow underneath the the arms. You can go in darker over on this side. Just adding, just building up that color little by little. You can start adding small little details like in the fingers. Just give 
a rough little detail of little little tiny fingers there. I didn't really give him a chin last time, so I'm gonna do a little bit more of more of a chin. on my brush come back and kind of fine-tune I'm gonna put a little bit more color here on the nose I'm kind of doing a little bit of a triangle on his nose blend that out I'm going to go ahead and while that's drying up there, I'm going to grab my pink, a little pink up here, and I'm going to give him a little feet. It's little, little balls of, you know. And while it's wet, I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that darker brown and just put it on the top of it. that's drying this is kind of dry up here now so I'm going to add some more color up here so I'm going to add a little bit more of that red tone and again if you have your own hamster that you are recreating feel free to use your own reference all down for that so I'm gonna, on the top here I'm going to add a bit more detail of little strokes to add little fur like uh, fur like lines a lot of the time you don't have to put in every detail but just enough so that your eye your eyes kind of create the rest right And I'm just, I've just been using this one brush the whole time. I haven't switched brushes. And I think I pulled this dark a little bit too much. So I'm going to clean out my brush, kind of wiggle my brush and just pull it up a little bit. And just softens it ever so slightly. I'm gonna go ahead and add another coat to the ears, but this time I'm going to add that kind of black to um, the tips of it. It's a little bit darker on the tips.
I would encourage you not to try to copy mine exactly because that's going to be hard because even even I'm looking at my same you know reference and mine still looks different you know so look at your painting and how you would like to add to it not so much you know copy paste what I'm doing I'm here to give you the techniques, the hows, not necessarily the perfect wares. All right, for this section, while all that dries, I am going to grab my smallest brush, smallest brush, so I can grab some black. And I'm going to put in um, I'm going to put in my, my black eyes. And that's probably the only part that I'm being fairly specific about. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of a red tone to this like brownish black so I can do the inside of the mouth. And then I'm going to add a little bit of that yellow to those little nostrils. And while that dries, before I can get back to the nostril mouth area, um, I'm just going to start adding a little bit more um, darkness to some of the areas. I'm just going to take my clean brush and just blend it out a little bit. Again, being very loose with this all. Very, very loose. I'm going to add a little bit more um, 
darkness to the bottom here. I'm going to take um, my tiny brush again and I'm just going to give a tiny amount of detail Um, you can like give any detail you want on the feet or the hands. And then lastly, I'm going to grab um, just one of the colors. It doesn't really matter what color. I'm going to grab some water. And I'm just going to give it a little, a little seat to sit on. And then I'm going to come in with some water and just pull that color down until it kind of fades out and dries off. You can give a little bit of, of um, shadow if you want. Pull that down or blend it in if you want. And then you can grab the remaining of the colors, grab some water, mix it in. And what I did is I kind of put my hand over the main part of it and just I kind of just splattered a little bit. You don't have to splatter, you don't have to do this, but I thought it was really playful and fun. And I'm just tapping. I'm just tapping my brush. And then if you do get any on it, you can just gently wipe it away, wiping that on your brush. Um, and then you can also do a little bit of some bigger ones with your, um, with your brush, kind of man-made.
And yeah, that's pretty much it. How fun is that? He's so cute. I think this time around I didn't do as much like fur on like the edges. And I think you kind of have to do that right on like the first go. It's not really something you add later. It's something that you just do on your first coat maybe. Um, but yeah, super fun, super cute. Um, I cannot wait to see your guys's. I think I might make his cheeks a little pinker um, because that was like one of my favorite parts <laughs> of the first one. It's just his little cute little pink cheeks that match the color of his feet. Super cute. And then you can just keep playing with it until you get something that you like. And if I had a hamster, I would 100% uh, paint my hamster. <laughs> Makes me want a hamster, but I don't have to clean the cage all the time, so no, I don't want a hamster. <laughs> but they're very cute. If I have a friend who has a hamster, that would be amazing, because then I could just mooch off of the cuteness that they have. But um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me, guys. Um, if you like this, please subscribe. Um, I would love to see your guys' version of this. I think that it is super cute and I can't wait to see them. Um, I do have a Facebook community where you can um, you can share your classwork from um, my Patreon classes, from these classes, um, or from Patreon art challenges. Um, so yeah, make sure you go and uh, that is a free Facebook group. You don't have to pay anything to be in there. You don't have to be a Patreon, patro, patron from Patreon to do that. Um, that is just free for anyone to join. Um, the content is exclusive to um, just my classes or art challenges from Patreon. Um, so it is kind of more exclusive to uh, my classes and stuff. But um, but yeah, I can't wait to see your guys'. Um, I have, um, if you're not familiar with that group, um, if you go into the albums section, um, which if you're on... If you're on desktop, it's at the top tab. It's one, like one of those tabs. If you're on mobile, sometimes it can be hard to find. Um, I do have at the featured um, like all of my classes. I have that featured at the top, so they're easy to find. But I also, if you click the three little lines at the top of your Facebook app um, while you're in that group, you can click on albums and you can view literally all of the classes that I have available, um, whether on Patreon, on YouTube, um, any of those classes, uh, I have albums for it. So I'm going to go ahead and update um, that with this album. You can post yours on the wall or you can add it and and or you can add it to the actual album. And then when other people go looking for, you know, cute little watercolor illustrations, they'll see yours in that album as well. And they'll get inspired, be like, oh, they can do it. I can do it. Um, so that's really fun. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm excited for next month's watercolor class again. Um, if you would like to paint some just super simple abstract boho stuff, um, that's what we'll be doing. You can choose the like literally whatever color you want on that. So if you have a nursery theme or like you want to give it away or anything like that, um, that would be a great gift. And you can do it on a larger scale too. I just found out, um, little side note, I just found out that um, Hobby Lobby has like watercolor paper canvases. I had no clue. So if you want to paint on a canvas, but you're doing watercolor, you can. They have watercolor paper canvases, which is crazy um, and super cool. I didn't know that. But anyways, I'll stop talking. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you next week. Um, we have some fun stuff coming up, but um, if you're a horse gal, we're painting horses running on a beach at sunset. It's a really easy um, acrylic painting class next month or next week. 
Uh, so, or not next week. It'll be, I'm taking next week off because I was called into jury duty and I don't know if I'm actually going to be like called in or if, I don't know. I just, I don't want to have to cancel classes if I do get called in. So I'm taking next week off. I'll see you in uh, two weeks and um, happy painting guys. All right. Have a great night and we will see you soon. Bye guys.